What can we do with electric impulses? And what are they anyway? Let's take a look. In the past few years, I have learned how to use these impulses. And what I have learned and demonstrated is that they produce displacement currents, which are longitudinal flows of volumes of ether. And these are the mysterious Tesla currents, which Nikola Tesla used. To be clear, a pulse is not an impulse. A pulse is not natural. It is fabricated by switching a power supply on and off. Like with pulse width modulation to power a LED light, you use pulses. But impulses are natural in the sense that they are resonant. They are resonant half waves. And you can easily create impulses by using a pulsed supply. With an auto oscillating relay, for instance, if it's connected to a battery, then the relay is being pulsed. The coil of the relay charges up with a magnetic field. And when it's discharging, it creates an oscillation. It rings. When a diode is passed over the switch, then we end up with a single half wave resonance. And that is natural. So it's only one polarity, a single half wave of the natural vibration of the coil. While a pulse can be made in any frequency we want because we force it to be. And an impulse is not forced, it appears naturally. Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm doing open source research into impulse electricity. I publish what I learn on my YouTube channel, whereby I explain it so others can benefit from it. No patents can or will be applied. Impulses are very interesting because of their rapid changes in high voltage, which induce displacement currents. Displacement currents move through dielectric materials like glass and plastic epoxy, which normally are considered isolators. So this is no conventional type of current as it does not need a traditional conductor. For this to work, the impulse needs to be high in voltage and short in duration. You can compare it with slapping your hand on the surface of the water. If you put enough speed and force into the slap, the water will produce a fast longitudinal wave. But if you move your hand too soft, the water will only produce slow transverse waves. Now let's proceed with the impulses. Electric impulses are resonant unipolar half waves. There are actually two types of impulses, current impulses and voltage impulses. And both can be positive or negative, but have only one polarity. Let me show you this more clearly with this picture. In red, we have the voltage sine wave representative of the dielectric field between the capacitor plates. And in blue, we've got the current sine wave representative of the magnetic field around the coil. I've divided the whole period in four quarters, Q1 to Q4. And if we look at Q1 and Q2, we can see in red the voltage becoming maximum and minimum again while the current is moving from maximum to minimum and maximum again. This means the voltage and the current are 90 degrees out of phase, which is typical for resonance. So when one is maximum, the other is zero. This is because the electric field energy is transformed back and forth between the magnetic field of the coil and the dielectric field of the capacitor. Now an impulse is a half wave and not only a half wave, but also a unipolar half wave. So in that Q1 and Q2, that first half of the period, the current is not an impulse as it becomes negative maximum and positive maximum. So there is a polarity change and that does not occur with an impulse, but the voltage is an impulse as it is zero to positive maximum and zero again. 
and it only has one polarity, in this case a positive polarity. And we can see the same for the current. In Q2 and Q3, the blue line is zero to maximum and zero again, in this case a positive current impulse. The same happens in Q3 and Q4, the second half of the resonance period. Now the voltage is negative, the red line becomes negative maximum. And in Q4 and Q1, and these do repeat so they can be joined together, in Q4 and Q1 the current now makes a negative maximum. I mostly use a coil to create voltage impulses, as it is highly controllable, but there are benefits to using a capacitor discharge, which I used to show the working principle of field propulsion. How do we produce these impulses? Let's start with the voltage impulse production. A voltage impulse is produced by a coil. When a coil is charged up by a voltage source, it transforms the voltage supplied into a magnetic field which is stored around the coil. And when the supply then is interrupted by opening up the switch at one end of the coil, the magnetic field around the coil will transform into a voltage. It will become resonant. And I use series switched MOSFETs for this. The polarity of the voltage impulse depends on which side of the coil is switched open. This transformation of energy could go on until all resonant energy is transformed into heat by the resistance, but by using a special circuit the resonant energy can be recaptured after only a half wave, which is the impulse. I've made a video about this circuit called Efficient electric impulse generation, December 17, 2021. So the resulting voltage half wave is the impulse. Now how is a current impulse produced? A current impulse is produced by a capacitor. We first need to charge up the dielectric field between the two capacitor plates with the current supply. When the charged capacitor plates are shorted out, the dielectric field stored between the plates will flow through this shortcut and transform into a magnetic field, which is represented by a current. The most practical shortcut is a spark gap, because the high currents that are being produced will quickly destroy all other physical switches. This resonance again is ringing until all the energy is transformed into heat. But we can also stop the flow again after a half wave and this leaves us with a current half wave which is the impulse. And I showed this circuit and the principles in my field propulsion video, so you can look it up there. Now what is the difference between a voltage and a current impulse? To understand this a bit better I first need to explain that voltage is relative. Let's take a look at my dual channel power supply. This is my dual channel power supply, which I always have in series mode by pushing this button. And I connect the positive of the first channel to the negative of the second channel. And this way both channels add up their voltage. Just like two batteries in series will double their voltage. And I can get output from the negative and the positive. And I can measure the voltage with my meter. So if I now put the black over here and the red over there, I measure 33.12 volts because it's two times 16.6 volts. I've got green here, the middle is the earth connection because this is all a floating voltage. I can connect any point to earth ground. So let's first start off here. So now this is my reference voltage. This is the zero. So the same applies as before. I've got one channel. And I've got two channels which are added up. But for instance my half bridge circuit used the earth ground in the middle like this. I just connect earth ground to the center. 
So now the center is earth ground, relative zero, and the one channel is plus 16.58, while the other channel is minus 16.54 volts, while still being a total of 33.13 volts together. So voltage is always relative to the reference point. Let's return now to the difference between a voltage and a current impulse. To explain this, we need to take a look at the induced displacement current, which is defined by the change of voltage in time, dV dt. Let's first look at the displacement current induced by a current impulse, which is produced by a capacitor discharge. With the capacitor, we start off with a stored voltage in the dielectric field between the plates of the capacitor. And this, when the capacitor is being shorted, it transforms into a current. So the voltage is maximum, current is zero, the transformation produces a current impulse, which is again a half wave. So a negative voltage in the capacitor produces a negative current impulse. This sudden intense energy flow of the dielectric field is what produces the displacement current, which is the longitudinal flow of a volume of ether. If we reverse the polarity, so we start off with a positive voltage in the capacitor, then we would get a positive current impulse. Now again, it is important to note that the change in voltage now only has one polarity. It is positive as the voltage is constantly more positive. Now what about a voltage impulse which is produced by a coil discharge? In blue we have the current inside of the coil and in red the voltage from the capacity of the coil. So we start off with a negative current inside of the coil. We open up the switch and the coil starts resonating, whereby the current starts to be transformed into a voltage due to the capacity of the coil. So the voltage is zero when the current is maximum, and when the current is zero, the voltage is maximum. And this is only a half wave, and that is the voltage impulse. We can also do this with a negative current and then everything is reversed in polarity, then we get a negative voltage impulse from the positive current transformation. Now it is good to note that the change in voltage is having two polarities. First, the change in voltage is positive as it becomes more, and then the change in voltage becomes negative, and thus, we have two directions of the displacement current. And this means the displacement current produced has two directions. It flows in and back out of the conductor. So this is the difference between voltage and current impulses. Now let's take a look at that displacement current from the current impulse and the voltage impulse and compare them. Here we look at two plates of a capacitor. If there is a voltage difference between the capacitor plates, then a dielectric field will be generated between the plates. Now, these plates can be pancake coils, and when they're resonant, they can have different voltages and thus create a dielectric field between those plates. In my case, this would be the primary coil, P, and this would be the secondary coil, S. Now a current impulse, let's take a look at the graph again. We need to take a look at the capacitor discharge for this. The current impulse has a voltage change that is unipolar. It is always becoming more positive. And this is with the current impulse. That means with that, if we use that on this plate, then the displacement current will only flow out of the capacitor plate. 
towards the secondary. This means the change in the dielectric field is unipolar. It has just one direction. The polarity of the displacement current determines if the field energy is flowing into the conductor or out of the conductor. So with a current impulse, the voltage change is constantly becoming positive and this produces a single direction displacement current out of the conductor, which can be a capacitor plate or a plate coil, a pancake coil, a bifilar pancake coil, as I use it in my primary coil. If the voltage flows from positive to negative, then it flows out of the conductor, the displacement. And when the voltage flows from negative to positive, then the energy flows into the conductor. So with a current impulse, the volume of ether flows in just one direction, in or out of the conductor. Now let's take a look at a coil discharge. So here we've got the coil discharge again, which produces a voltage impulse that is first positive and then negative in its displacement that it's inducing because the dv dt is the displacement current. So the change in voltage is positive and then the change in voltage is negative. And this means that now we don't have a single direction displacement current, but we have a dual direction displacement current. First, it is positive flowing out of the conductor towards the secondary, and then it is flowing back into the conductor. And this is very good to be aware of because with that voltage impulse, with the dual direction of the displacement current, we have two motions where we can make use of. A current impulse from a capacitor induces a unipolar displacement current in or out of the conductor, and a voltage impulse from a coil induces a bipolar displacement current in and out of the conductor. But what can we do with this? In previous videos, I have already shown that the displacement current can be used to transmit electric energy through dielectric materials, isolators. I've used distilled water for this. And I have shown the working principle of field propulsion, whereby the unipolar flow of ether produced pressure against a copper plate, which was set in motion. Conclusion. So, a capacitor can produce current impulses, which induce single direction longitudinal movements of ether while a coil can produce voltage impulses, which induce dual longitudinal direction movements of the ether. These ether movements can be used to produce thrust, resonant current amplification, or wireless transmission of energy. And the polarity of the displacement determines if the flow of ether comes out of or flows into the conductor. If you want to fund my open source research, then you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. There's a tiny URL link that links to my PayPal account. And most of all, share this content with others. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.